If you find this video useful, remember to click like and subscribe. And for more information about all our resources and revision courses that we do, go to alevelmathsrevision.com. So this video here, to further bridge the gap between GCSE and A-Level Maths, I'm going to do on inequalities. So there's an associated worksheet with this that you should have a go at as well on alevelmathsrevision.com. But let's get straight into it. So if we were asked to solve this inequality here, minus 35, less than 6x plus 7, less than 1, you won't have seen one like this before, but this is an inequality with three sides. One there, one there, and one there. So when we do something to this, we have to do it to all three sides. When solving equations previously, you'd say do it to both sides. Well, this one would do it to all three sides. So we want to isolate the x, get the x on its own. So we've got minus 35, less than 6x plus 7, less than 1. So thinking back to what we did in the rearranging formulae tutorial, let's have a look at this here. We want to get the x on its own, so we're going to strip away everything from the x. Well, the first thing we'll take away is 7. So take 7, not just from both sides, because there aren't two sides, but from all three sides. So take 7, we get minus 42, which is less than 6x, which is less than, and take 7 from that, minus 6, then divide by 6 to get x isolated on its own. So we get minus 7, less than x, less than minus 1. And that tells us that x lies between minus 7 and minus 1. So that's what that inequality boils down to. So get used to seeing three-sided inequalities. Another strange quirk that you might find when starting a level that wasn't present at GCSE, let's say we're asked to solve something like that. And I'm going to do this incorrectly first, then tell you why it's incorrect. So we've got 5 minus 3x is less than 2. So I'm going to take away 5. So that gives me minus 3x, if I take 5 from the left-hand side, is less than. And take 5 from the right-hand side gives us minus 3. So now naturally, don't forget the implication sign there. And that implies that. So we divide both sides by minus 3. We get x is less than 1. And that's not right. So now at the side here, I'll explain why it's not right. Now, I'm sure you agree that 5 is greater than 3. So let's times both sides now by minus 1. So I get minus 5 is greater than minus 3, which clearly, again, is not right. So I've times both sides by minus 1. And then suddenly it goes from being correct to incorrect. Minus 5 is certainly not bigger than minus 3. What this illustrates, that when multiplying or dividing by negative numbers in inequalities, it changes the direction of the inequality sign. So as long as we flip the direction of the sign, when we times or divide by a negative number, and you must remember to do that, then it is right. So... This becomes x is less than 1. So remember, you must flip the inequality sign when multiplying or dividing by a negative number in inequalities. So two things we learned so far. We have three-sided inequalities where we have to do the same thing to all three sides. And when we times or divide by a negative number in inequalities, the direction of the sign must change. Now let's get on to the good stuff. Quadratic inequalities, and it's really important that you're good at this before you start A-level. Anything to do with quadratics is just assumed knowledge come A-level. So let's get on to looking at quadratic inequalities. So let's say we're asked to solve this inequality here. We want all the values of x for which x squared minus 6x minus 40 is greater than or equal to 0. So the first thing we should do is try to find the roots of the quadratic Sometimes these roots are called critical values in this context. So let's do that. Let's try and factorise this equal to zero. Forget for now that it's an inequality. Let's just find the roots of the quadratic or the critical values, as I said, they're sometimes known. So we factorise that. So two numbers that times to make minus 40, but add to make minus 6. And we can see that numbers that do the job are minus 10 
and plus 4. Times together to make minus 40, add together to make minus 6. So from that, we can conclude that the critical values are x equals 10 and x equals minus 4. Now, this next bit here is the bit that A-level students are terrible at doing. And they get these questions wrong time after time because they don't do this bit. And consequently, it falls apart. Draw a diagram of the quadratic curve. As I say, they leave this out time after time. And as a result, they don't get any marks. So currently, I can see this is a positive quadratic because the x squared is positive. So it's going to be u-shaped. And it's going to have roots at 10 and minus 4. So let's draw that. And there's our axes. So minus 4 and 10, roughly u-shaped like that. Let's just label our axes. So there's minus 4 and there's 10, roughly to scale. So at this point, what I like to do now is divide the graph up into strips through the roots. So we'll have three strips. So cut it through the roots. I can see three distinct areas there. We've got this area here. We've got this area here. And we've got this strip, this area here. So three strips. And I'm going to classify these strips as being positive or negative. Well, I can see here the curve is above the x-axis. So I'm going to call that a positive strip. In this strip here, the curve is below the x-axis, so I'm going to call that a negative strip, and here, a positive strip. Again, because the curve is above the axis. And the next step is as follows, and that is to look back at the original question, the original inequality, and decide whether the positive or negative readings are required. So let's do that. So look back up the original inequality. I can see here, greater than or equal to zero. So the positive regions are required. So the positive regions are this yellow one here and this green one here. So here, x is greater than or equal to 10. That's what that yellow region is, has x values, x greater than or equal to 10. Or, and that's a key word, x is less than or equal to minus 4, because the green region, the other positive region, has x values less than or equal to minus 4. And we know it's less than or equal to, because the original inequality was an or equal to. If that just said greater than, our answers would be a greater than and a less than. So that's how we do those, but it's really important, I mentioned uh, before that it was really important to use the word or, if you were to write x greater than or equal to 10 and x is less than or equal to minus 4, that would instantly make the answer wrong, you're contradicting yourself, you said something is greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to minus 4, doesn't make sense, nothing can be bigger than or equal to 10 and at the same time be less than or equal to 4, daft thing to say, so the key word is or. Another interesting thing about this answer is that it's in two parts. That's because there were two strips that were positive. If, for whatever reason, this question said, let's just cross that out, said less than or equal to zero, then we'd want the negative strip here. And there's only one region here of interest, just one negative strip, therefore we should have one inequality as our answer. So if it was a less than or equal to that we're solving, the answer would be minus 4, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 10. And again, that's because there's one region that we're trying to describe, so we should describe that using one inequality in the order that the numbers appear on the number line. So from left to right, minus 4 first, 10 second. So minus 4, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 10. So moving on, let's do another couple of examples. So let's try this one here. So the question asks us to solve the equation 5 minus 8x minus x squared equals 0, given your answers in simplified third form. So that suggests neither complete the square or use the quadratic formula. 
and I suggest the quadratic formula. But let's write it in the order um, that one you, that we're normally used to seeing a quadratic in first. So we've got minus x squared. The x squared term comes first. Minus 8x plus 5 equals 0. Now there's two ways of solving this equation here. We can either use the quadratic formula or completing the square. Uh, we haven't gone through the quadratic formula in these tutorials yet. So let's use completing the square for now. Quadratic formula we'll come to in a later session. So remember from last week on completing the square. Minus in front of the x squared. So let's take it out as a factor. So we get x squared plus 8x. If we take minus 1 out as a factor. Plus 5 equals 0. Let's just check. Does that actually give us the line above? Minus x squared. Minus 8x plus 5 equals 0. Yes, indeed it does. So now, so that implies, don't forget the implication sign. Let's complete the square for what's in the bracket. So we get x plus 4 squared minus 16 plus 5 equals 0. And then multiplying out this big square bracket, we get minus x plus 4 squared plus 16 plus 5 equals 0. And if we take this negative term over to the other side, what we get is 21 equals x plus 4 squared. Now if we square root both sides, i.e. unsquare both sides, we get root 21. But when we unsquare something, remember from our rearranging formula tutorial, it becomes plus or minus equals x plus 4. Which means that x equals minus 4 plus or minus root 21. So we've got the two solutions. Now part two, solve that inequality. Well, notice we've just done the first step, as we spelled out before, of being able to solve the inequality. We found the roots, and now we're just left to sketch it. So let's do a diagram. But notice this time, and this is something that can do to try and catch you out, this is a negative quadratic. The x squared term is negative. Therefore, it's going to be upside down. So minus 4 minus root 21, clearly negative. Both components are negative. And this is minus root 16 plus root 21. Well, that's positive. So it's going to look something like that. Not a very good drawing of a quadratic, but I'm not really that bothered because just a rough idea of the shape that I want. So minus 4 minus root 21. And here, minus 4 plus root 21. And as I say, I know this is positive because minus root 16 plus root 21. Well, clearly 21 is bigger than 16, so it's going to be positive. So let's, as I suggested before, divide into strips through the roots. So there we go there. And classify the strips as being positive or negative. So I've got a strip here. I've got a strip here and one here. So in this strip, the curve is below the x-axis. So this is a negative. Here, the curve is above the x-axis, so it's a positive. And here again, it's below the x-axis, so it's a negative. Now in the question, we want the negative strips, and it's a less than or equal to, so our answer is going to be an or, an or equal to as well. So I can say here now, all these x values for this green strip here are where x is less than or equal to minus 4 minus root 21. Or, keyword, x is greater than or equal to minus 4 plus root 21. And there's our solutions to the inequality. And finally, let's do one more, another example of a question that's trying to catch us out. So 3x squared is less than 48. Now with a question like this, there's a temptation 
and I'm about to do it incorrectly here. I'll do it the side incorrectly. So divide by 3, I get x squared is less than 16. And if I root both sides, I get x is less than or equal uh, is less than plus or minus 4. Now to find this answer here, I completely ignored my previous previously spelled out method of finding the roots of the quadratic, drawing a diagram, um, and then looking at the diagram to decide what whether we want the positive or negative regions. And basically, I've got a wrong answer because of that. You'll see why that's a wrong answer when I do it properly. But first of all, we've got to turn this into a quadratic so we can use a quadratic method. So 3x squared minus 48 is less than 0. And I can divide by 3 now. So that implies that, which implies that x squared and 48 divided by 3 is 16. So x squared minus 16 is less than 0. Well, that implies that if I factorise into the difference of two squares, x plus 4, x minus 4 is less than 0. Leaving critical values, x equals minus 4 or x equals 4. So now if I use that to sketch the graph, like that. So I can see that there's roots at 4 and minus 4, and it's a positive quadratic. So that's what it's going to look like at minus 4 and 4. So let's divide that up into strips. I can see there's three strips there. I won't bother highlighting them this time. But I can see that this is a positive strip because it's above the x-axis. So that one there is positive. This one in the middle is negative because the curve is below the x-axis. And this one is positive because the curve is above the x-axis. So this here now wants negative values. And we want strictly negative values as well. This isn't an, this isn't an or equal to inequality. It's a strictly less than. So our answer is going to involve strictly less than as well. Now, the negative part, there's only one region here that's negative. So we should have one single inequality for our answer. So minus 4, less than x, which is less than 4. And we can see why that's right. And we can now see why that's wrong. This is saying x is less than 4, which it is. But it's also saying x is less than negative 4, which it's not. It's actually greater than negative 4. So x lies between minus 4 and 4. So the moral of this story, don't do it that way. Make sure you follow a full quadratic method each time. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.